All right, in this video, I'm just going to demonstrate how to make a pretty basic interactive game here. So I'm going to rename this as interactive game sample. And let's get some characters that I actually like here. So we're going to add a new sprite. And I'm thinking of an underwater theme. So if I go to animals, let's just find something. There's some fish here I could pick from. I like the octopus. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on my cat and get rid of him. Delete cat. So here is my octopus character. And we want this guy to move across the screen every time we press the arrow key. So I'm going to grab a forever loop or forever event, uh, a green flag event, drag in the forever loop. And we need four if statements for the four arrow keys. So four if statements, you can go to sensing, four key pressed, one for up, one for down, one for left, and one for right. And of course, now we need to go to motion and change our X and Y's. So for right, let's change X by positive. Left, change X by a negative. Uh, up is change Y by a positive. And down, change Y by a negative. If I were to make this number bigger or less than 10, it would just change the speed at which my character moves. So let's test this out. If I press the green flag, my character moves left and right. I want to add a little bit more animation to this. So if I go to the costumes tab, a lot of the built-in scratch characters have multiple costumes, and I can use this to make it look as though my octopus is swimming here. So if I says, uh, whenever I press up, down, left, or right, I can also do something like next costume. Let's see what happens. If I drag this into each of my button presses. Now, whenever I move, my octopus kind of looks like he's sort of twitching, to be honest. Let's slow this down here. I could throw a weight block, but then that would actually make the keys delayed. So instead, I'm actually just going to duplicate the costumes and leave them in a particular order to kind of slow down the character's appearance here. So I just duplicated each set costume set uh, three times total. So now when I flip through the costumes, he's swimming a little bit slower, a little bit less twitchy. And because the octopus is actually a slow animal, let's even slow it down even more. So I'm going to duplicate these and again leave it in the correct order. And we'll just add two more to the bottom here. And now let's preview. There we go. And you'll notice that if I'm looking at the costume window, I'm flipping through all my costumes. All right. Now let's actually make this kind of an interactive game. So let's add a nice backdrop. And I'm going to stick with the underwater theme. So let's go with this guy. And let's add a score or like some type of counter. So let's go ahead and make something called lives. So I have a way to gain and lose lives here up in the corner. So let's say um, we'll add a bad guy. Let's add another sprite. Let's see what animals we have that could attack our octopus here. How about the shark? Let's say every time for the shark, he's just going to chase the octopus. So forever, let's do something like point towards octopus and move, let's say, five steps. He'll be a slow shark. Now, the reason I did move five steps is because if I had to do change X and Y, I would only be able to control one thing at a time. Now you'll note that the shark can, in fact, change both X and Y and he just chases my octopus around. Now I'm actually gonna slow him down even more, make my game a little bit easier, Let's say move two steps. And you might have noticed that the shark was kind of rotating around. If I go into the settings here, I can change the rotation style and I can say my shark can only go left and right to keep him from kind of orbiting around like a tennis ball. So now my shark just slowly chases my octopus. Here we go. And let's actually make the octopus a little bit smaller with the shrink tool. And that way the shark's nice and big. And you, now let's actually go ahead and make it that every time the octopus touches the shark, he loses a life. So we can do a if touching. If touching shark. Let's minus one. So change lives by negative one, and let's see what happens when our shark catches the octopus. Here we go, we're losing lives, but we're losing lives exponentially. We really just wanna lose one life and then kind of reset our game here. So 
we're going to lose a life, and then we're going to send everybody back to the starting positions. So let's say every time we lose a life, we're going to say go to 0, 0, so start in the center. And I'll actually add go to 0, 0 at the top of my program, so each time you start the game, the octopus starts in the same spot. And for the shark, we'll say if touching octopus, I don't need to say lose a life or minus one for lives because you've already done that on the other character. We'll say if touching octopus, um, go to, hmm, let's see, where do we want to send the shark? Let's set y to always a negative number. So the shark will always start from, actually we'll do a positive number. So the shark will always start from somewhere up here, like 150. But well, let's make the x value random. So you never really know where the shark's going to be. Is it going to be in the top right corner or the top left corner? You never know. So we'll just put negative 240 to positive 240 to make it kind of a random guess. Where's the shark going to be? Who knows? And let's try this out. So the shark started from the left corner here. If they touch, notice how I lost a life and the shark went back to the top. The octopus went back to the middle. And again, you never really know where the shark's going to come from. He's going to be somewhere on the random X position. Now, I'm actually going to make the octopus start a little bit lower to make my game a little bit easier. So we'll say the octopus is going to start at Y minus 100. And if you lose a life, Y minus 100. And we also need to set lives to zero or however many lives you start the game with. So each time you press the green flag, we'll give the character five lives. I could also do something like play a sound each time we lose a life. So if I go into my sounds library, I don't want the meow. I could do something like, I don't know. Um, suspense, that sounds like a good one. So each time we lose a life, play sound suspense and kind of move around here. So let's see what happens. Each time they should touch, they lose a life. Everybody sets back to zero, and I have zero lives, but we're still playing because I never said what to do if we run out of lives. So let's add one more if statement. If lives is less than one, or I can say equal to zero, so we'll say equal to zero, then what do we want to do? Let's say um, we'll kind of get make everything go away. So we will hide lives. We will hide our octopus. I'm actually going to duplicate this to the shark. So that way we can also hide the shark when we run out of lives here. So if lives equals zero on the shark side, we'll hide the shark. And then we'll change the backdrop. So if I go to my backdrops, I'm going to add... I'll use the original backdrop, make it kind of dark and gloomy, and I could say something like, game over. And this screen will appear every time you run out of lives. So if I go to my octopus script, we can say, change, switch to backdrop, game over, or backdrop one, so that's what it's called. Now, here's the one problem. If I press the green flag, we're not underwater, and that's because I need to set the backdrop to underwater each time the game starts. So green flag, start the game. Let's just run out of lives here. I might have a little lives glitching problem. And game over, just like so. And when we start, none of the characters are there. And that's because, again, just like the backdrop, we need to say whenever the green flag is clicked, don't forget to show your characters or else they will be hidden after you, in fact, die. So here is our basic game that each time, of course, you start the game, everything is showing. Each time you touch the shark, you, in fact, do lose a life. And when you run out of your lives, you get the game over screen. And to restart, you have to press the green flag. Just a pretty basic game with some of the things that we've discussed in previous Scratch tutorial videos.